Hello, hello. Just look at all the goodies I found in the thrift store just a week ago. And I want to show you why I took these home and um, what I'm going to use them for. You know, guys, that I'm starting a fairy dollhouse and I don't want all the pieces to be exactly accurate as far as scale because, well, I think my fairies inside my house also like to use things that I wouldn't think of. Well, you know, they, they gather things and they use them in a, in a different way than we would come up with. At least that's how my brain works. But I found all these things and especially the thimbles. I was so happy to find these. Look, this one is probably collected by some tourists who went to Budapest and took it to the Netherlands. And all these thimbles, um, they usually were a euro each, but this thrift store was stopping. And so I got them for 50 cents each. And look, here is a little thimble for, from Germany. But if I turn it around, let me show you what I can make of these. I can make another coffee pot for my fairies or perhaps make uh, because this one is their coffee pot maybe I can use this one to make a teapot I'm not sure yet but this was a wonderful find and also this was in a section that um, you know these these sometimes you get these these baskets full of stuff that even the thrift store don't know what to do with Probably this was a bonbon tray, um, but I use it for my fairy house. Uh, it, probably this is a little bit too big if I, uh, scale wise, if I put it next to my fairy, but I think it's really lovely. And then there were these jugs, and they um, charged me 25 cents. Um, initially for each but because it was half price uh, I could have these together for 25 cents and there was a basket full of tweezers and I thought well I'm going to take these because all these tiny elements inside my dollhouse it's just so easy to use tweezers on them and um, well with my good fortune I might glue one of these shut so I just took the lot and Look at, oh yeah, and this tray cost me two euros and fifty cents, but because it was reduced, it was just one twenty-five. And a brush for fairies. I think I might paint over this. I'm not sure yet, but um, obviously this looks too plasticky, and it is probably from a Barbie. But I thought if I would cover this in gold acrylic paint. And then do the bristles with black paint. It might look a little bit more realistic. And then in the section where they kept all the, um, yeah, well, um, old elements of, of board games, I got these. And I'm not sure what I'm going to use these for exactly, but look at these champagne bottles. I just love them. And obviously the caps of these ones are missing, but I could easily just put a pin in there or just a little bead and they would look absolutely fine. And some more bottles, wooden bottles this time, that I absolutely like for my dollhouse. And perhaps I can use these little wooden elements um, if I put a label on here and um, paint the top part black, it, it could be a, a storage tin or something like that. And I just had to get this letter opener because there is a little deer on here. And this was like 25 cents now. I, I just couldn't leave it there. I mean, am I a hoarder? <laughs> Probably, but I also use these. These... Um, are polymer clay beads. I'm not sure what I'm going to use them for, but 
they look so typically Dutch with the red, white and blue. I thought I could make something nice out of them. And these all came in a set. Well, these were with the cardboard games, but this all came in a set. And I thought, well, these would make lovely lamps with some bead caps on there and all the rings I can use. And well, you know me and little glass bottles. These are a little bit bigger than the bottles I normally use, but I think it would be nice to have a variety of shapes and sizes. And this would be like an enormous jar for my dolls. But yeah, I have enormous jars in my home too. So why not? So this is all for my dollhouse. And I just took this tray so the little things wouldn't get lost inside my cart at the thrift store. But then I ended up taking it home because I like it nevertheless. And my husband already said because, well, he knows me and um, colorful and blingy stuff. And he said, well, we might use this tray in our camper van because it probably won't break. So, yay! <laughs> and the next stuff I found is more for junk journaling. And you guys, I hit, I really hit the jackpot with these ones. Door handles. And they were all a euro each originally so i got all of these for like 50 cents each so i i just took the lot i i just left because they had like 20 of these so i left a lot of these i just took two of them but oh, look at them and i have a similar closure on my slanted desk here in my room but they just took this off of probably of furniture that was falling apart but I can use this on my fairy junk journal because it is in need of a closure because it is it is turning into rather a gator mouth but if I put a closure on there it will last me a little bit longer so I have been playing around already and look that was the price one euro but I just paid 50 cents well this is not the best but I had one here that was look at this my frame yeah this would be so beautiful so i am going to play with this one or or one of the other oh this one would be nice too just look at this wouldn't that be lovely and just paint this this black and just put a ribbon underneath or put a piece of cardboard underneath that i can attach the ribbon to i am going to have a proper play with these later on but i just wanted to show them to you um show them one by one if you like <laughs> this is going to be on one of my new ikea desks because well it is the ikea desks are or cupboards are made of of solid wood so i can put these in here and it is pine so it will um color with time and and oh my god this will be beautiful and i like these old elements on new furniture yeah call me crazy this one. Oh, I really like this one. It looks so old and tattered. Uh, I think it's it's just beautiful. And I will I will probably use this on my own furniture because well this is really heavy if I put it on a book. And this one is even um, perhaps even more gorgeous than this one. I can't decide. I really can't decide. I love them all equally. I wish they had more of these because I absolutely love these on drawers. But there was just this one. And this one is gorgeous. This one would be beautiful on my journal. Let me just show you. I think like, like it was meant for this because I tore this out. I think I'm going to use this one on here. And I'm going to keep that one on there. I'll work with that later this is a, a newer one silver colored one obviously i could age it but on the other hand i also like to have one that is a little bit newer so this one is really old this one is also really nice actually i'm going to save this together with the one i've just put aside for my journal because that one might also be really nice 
I think this is from a set of scales or something. I'm not sure, but it's enamel and it's old, so I really like it. There's this one. This one. They vary in weight a lot because, well, this one is really flimsy and this one is, is I think this is copper. I'm not sure. But this one is really heavy and this one is, is well, it's lightweight. So to put this on a journal and I would really make it a heavy journal and this one, well, not so much, would be okay. Oh, look at this one. They're all so, so beautiful. And I just grabbed them. I just put them inside my basket and I really just looked at them properly when I came home. This one's also really nice together with this one. And then this one is the last one, a silver colored one, but it's absolutely beautiful. And I can put breads in here. So putting all these aside, and then I found this. Um, originally, they asked 250 for it, 250 euros, but um, I got it for 125. And it is plastic, so I thought, well, wouldn't this be nice to do some coffee dyeing on papers? It is. It is rather big. I think it is um, one meter fifty by fifty centimeters. So I really like this one and it is because it is real, um, yeah, how do you call it? This one, this side is texture, textured <laughs> and this side is really flat and it also feels like it could stick on, on things like, like plastic. So, oh, look here, it has broken a bit, but that won't matter for my coffee dyeing. And then they had these. You know, these are old wallets. Um, I had these like in the 70s and the 80s. They were absolute nuis nuisance to, to use because, well, this pocket, if you put coins in there, they will slip all to, to the bottom. And if you, you can close this, but you, I mean, you had your coins in your purse all the time. But this is so nice to, to make a little journal out of. And this one was colored by the person who owned it. And the person who owned it was um, Jona. I can't, I can't even read the last name. But I like this. And then there was also this one that I think is even more beautiful. And sometimes they also had an opening here but i think this one was stitched later on because well these stitches look a bit newer but there's no opening in the in the top sides of these but it's it's fine i mean i can make little journals out of these and then they had all these notes um for, i i mean they're lovely to they're not that vintage but um I would coffee dye them and they would look just perfect. This is a nice one because it is rather big. And this one is more or less similar to this one. Only the color is uh, different. And they charged me 50 cents for this one. So um, because it was half price, I only paid 25 cents. And there's still a decent amount of papers in here. And this one... 250 so I paid 125 and this one one euro so I paid like 50 cents and these are not real vintage like I said before but I do like them and to to coffee dye them and to use them and they are cheap so um, I don't mind if some of them uh, don't work out fine or anything I'm going to pause the video here and then I'm going to show you what closure that I will put on my, my journal. So let's craft a little bit, but I will have to change the setting up a bit and take you along in putting the closure on my journal. So for you, it will just be a second. For me, it will be like well, 10 minutes most, I think. 
So that took me a bit longer because while I was working things out, I also took this one and I think this one even looks nicer than this one because they're, well, to me, they're both really fine. And um, if I only had this one, it would be perfect. But I think this one, because it is a little, a little less, uh, yeah, in your face, <laughs> if that is a, something. But this doesn't take away as much from the fairy while, yeah. Oh, you guys, I can't. I think I think I would choose either and it would be fine. But for now, I think this one is easier to the eye than this one. I think this one is too Baroque. Yeah, I'm going to use with this one. And then I also took out a nice embellishment for the back because, well, if I'm going to glue, sorry for that noise, if I'm going to glue anything on this journal, I mean, at first I thought I was just going to make holes in here. Well, that could still work because there's nothing on there, but I could also put this one here and that would also make for a nice closure. But I'm still, uh, <laughs> I'm still indecisive. Um, and instead of ribbon, I took this fabric to make a binding out of. Because at first I thought I was going to use my, um, what is it called? Um, sorry guys, I'm lost for words again. My silk, but... Um, I have already braided this silk part in the tassel because it was fraying like, yeah, I don't want to use bad language, but it was fraying far too much for my liking. And all the little bits got tangled up inside the frays and it was breaking. So I've braided this part and I really like it. And the, the tassel still looks perfectly fine with this braid in here but then I thought I'm not going to use silk for my closure because it is too fragile and I had this batik fabric that I bought at a fair once and I thought well if I this is cotton so it, it also frays but not as much as the silk does I've taken two equal parts I just tore them, but the one side of the fabric curls up more than the other. So this looks much wider, although it is exactly the same. And if I wet it and twist it, it will probably look like this one. But I have to do that off camera. And for now, I want to take some black cardstock and make a a little oval shape that can go behind this one so I can glue my fabric underneath. But at the same time, I'm still considering putting brads in here and making holes with my crocodile. So I'm going to pause the video here, have myself a coffee and think about what I want because, well, this journal is so precious to me that I want to have a proper think of what I want to do with it. So I'm going to have a coffee and I'll be back in just a second for you. So I figured you figured a few things out while I was emptying my coffee. And um, of course I could not just drink my coffee and do nothing. So I have already put the breads in here. And I did them the other way around, so the nice part is on the inside. And I have taken the fabric through. And let's first glue this back part on. I do like it on this journal that I used. Let me... Sorry for that, but I need to get my clamps there. Um, I like it for this journal to put an extra piece of bling embellishment on there. 
I'm using jewelry glue because I know this works perfectly. And I just want small beads of glue on the sides here as well. It does leave these strings and I don't like these strings a lot, but yeah, this is the best glue I have for this job. Well, let's just pretend that there are some spiders with my beautiful fairies. So put this on here. I'm going to take my cloth and take some of the surplus glue off. This glue is the best for getting it to stick. Um, well, for me it is. And also my son just bought me this. It's like um, yeah, an instant glue. It's supposed to be really strong. Um, I haven't used this one yet, but I was working with this. And he said, well, mom, you're not happy with it because it does leave stains. I said, I know, but... Uh, let me first juice this up and then I'll get to that one. So putting a clamp on here. And I'm probably going to leave that to dry until, well, probably tomorrow morning. And now for the other side. While I was drinking my coffee, I also um, clipped out a piece of black cardboard to put underneath here and I thought that was really nice but um, well you know by now how my brain works and this wasn't enough so I took out one of the digitals by Barbara from 49 Dragonflies her vintage fairy kit and um, well I've been playing with this yesterday and I've reduced it like to 50% and I thought why not put this behind here so you've got like a little peekaboo of what's inside the journal and I think this picture is so nice because now actually the dragonfly is looking towards the fairy so this is just a perfect little find I'm going to glue that one on first just with a little bit Do it like this so I can see where my dragonfly is going. Yeah, that's perfect. Oops. And this is what it looks like on the back. So now I'm going to attach. <sighs> Am I going to use. Hold on. Because I have breads in this color, I'm going to take them out and um, put them on here. Obviously not putting them through the book, but um, just gluing them on the back. So hold on, I'll just be a second. Back again. So I've got all these breads and um, let me see if I have a color that matches. I think I do. I think this one is perfect, but... Perhaps these are a little bit bigger. I'm not sure if they are, but they're more round. This one is more flat on the top. They are a little different. Can you see it? This one is flattened and this one is more like a dome shape. Oh, wow. Look at this. This just finishes it. I think I like the dome shape better. So you guys, sometimes it is a perfect idea just to slow things down a little bit. Have yourself a coffee and... Oh, wow. Yes, this is... To me, this is much better 
than just leaving these holes there. Um, putting these aside. I'm folding these on the back. <laughs> One of them doesn't want on here. Holding these like this. Where did that one go? Oh, that is just perfect. Of course, it doesn't want to stay in here because I've just folded everything to one side, but this is big enough so I can fold them. Either way, <laughs> they are challenging me. Fold them like this. Yeah, this disclosure is so big that this is just perfect. So I'm going to put a good amount of blue on here. Also underneath these brads, just around them, so they will stick to the journal also. Ah, oh, and these fumes of, of this glue are horrible, so I've got a window open. Because that is the unpleasant part of this glue just putting it on here for a bit Whew. and now use the clamps to Glue everything down. And it is not sticking to all the parts of the journal, so I'm going to get a set of pliers out and um, put a paper between them and just with my pliers um, fold everything to fit the journal better. So um, I'm going to do that off camera. Yeah. I need to take my pliers and put this down. Can you see it? it? It leaves too much of a gap. But I do have some time. Um, I'm going to do this and then I'll be back. Oh, you guys, I did a horrible job and I broke it. And I've dented this one. And now there's glue coming out from underneath there. So... Oh, I was almost in tears because, well, this journal is so precious to me and I almost ruined it with all my good ideas and intentions. But I'm going to leave this to dry now, not putting anything on it, no clamps, nothing. Um, the glue will hold it in place and to take away some of these gluey, ugh, yucky things coming from underneath there. I will probably, once this is dry, use some black paint and um, yeah, distress around this. And if I use some acrylic paint like I did here, well, there's some glue showing here as well, but um, then probably I will get the shine off of this and you won't see as much of the glue but oh guys if you could see my face now i'm <laughs> oh, i was <clears throat> so don't put any pliers with these really old elements because they will just break they're so fragile 
I can't I can't stop putting this together because I want to fix my mistake but whew. well okay I'm going to leave this to dry and um, then tell you what I will be up to in my next video so you guys I feel like such an idiot for breaking this but um, yeah it shows I'm only human um, so I have to forgive myself for doing this and um, I have to leave this alone and that's probably hard for me because I want to fiddle and make it but there's nothing more to do with it now I just have to leave it alone let the glue do its, its thing and then tomorrow put some black uh, acrylic paint behind there but what I wanted to show you is the doll I made for my dollhouse. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you have probably seen her. I have um, finished her because, well, I was doing these doll's heads and I was just getting into the mood of making a doll for myself. I've not made dolls for four years and I am back to my old love of doll making again. I have used her as inspiration, so that's why she's got this blue teal coat on. And uh, well, it's just inspiration and she has this white skirt and obviously I don't have, I have a lot of fabrics, but I did not have this. So I took two old hankies and made my doll a skirt. And um, this is another hanky that I use to make her skirt. But um, underneath that, her legs were bare. So you were <laughs> looking through this and I, I did not like that. So I also took a piece of really thin silk and made her an underskirt and beautiful big boots because that's what I like to wear too. <laughs> so this doll is the one that is inspired completely by this journal. And then I thought of another thing because my dear friend Barbara, hello sweetie, 49 dragonflies, she has made this, I'm showing you just the tiniest slivers of her new digital kit and the vintage fairy kit. And I'm going to have a play around with it, but I'm going to make it fairy size. So I have... Uh, shrunk it down to 50% and I'm going to make a small journal like this Alice in Wonderland journal that I did a really long time ago but the scale is I mean well <laughs> scale size I would make a journal this size for my little doll but um, then we wouldn't be able to see any of the lovely things that um, Barbara designed and then I got this idea that I'm going to also make small journals like this one with other people's digitals. Obviously, once I've done this, I will start with Maureen's digitals because, well, she's a really dear friend of mine. And she has also done some beautiful digitals that I could probably scale down and make a small journal with. And, um, well, this journal sits inside this matchbox and I also love to play around with matchboxes so I'm probably going to fit these journals right into matchboxes again and I love doing both the dolls and the journals I want to combine them and make everything fairy themed so if you like that I'm planning to do a paper video so I'm going to work on these tiny journals every Wednesday and then do the doll videos on Saturday. So if you are interested in both, then you've got Wednesday and Saturday of me uploading videos. And if you just like the paper side of things, well, it is just Wednesdays then. Or if you just like the dolls, it's Saturdays. For now, thank you, thank you for being here with me again. I so appreciate you guys. And there's a lot of new subscribers here over the past few weeks. So welcome to all of you. So if you have time, be so kind to leave me a comment down 
in the in the comment section i so appreciate that um and if you want to support me then subscribe and give this video a thumbs up it means the world to me and i love you guys and i hope to see you again really soon bye bye